Well, hey, y'all. Welcome back to uh, episode two of the Ford 8 in Resurrection. Hopefully, by the end of this episode, we'll find out if this will run or not. Now, in my uh, roughly 20-plus year mechanic and career, I have seen some poorly designed uh, bracketry for alternators and power steering pumps and whatnot. This is by far the worst. This is absolutely terrible. I, mean, I have never seen something so badly out of alignment. I just can't believe that this thing wasn't just chunking belts like every time you started it. It is horrible. Everything's out of line. So, we're going to do a delete on that real quick. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can get some of this garbage out the way here. It ain't good. Know, it's just got stacked washers and bracketry from, from this and a little bracketry from that. Hey, we're just going to just get all this out of the way. All right. So, well, you all want to wager that uh, she will or she won't run? Got to figure out the fuel, the electricals, the wiring. It's been setting at least four years that I know of. Okay, we're loose at the bottom. So we pretty much got to figure out all of the systems. What do we want to try next? I think this guy down here. Oh boy. Oh man, I'm feeling lucky. Okay, is that enough? Maybe you just gotta start it and just let it throw itself off. It's got a big old deep groove deal on it. Try to roll it off. Try the old roll it off trick. Okay, that got us very little. Roll it off this way. Well, she needed just all kinds of cattywampus to take the bolt all the way out. This kind of just makes me want to throw up. Okay, now we're gonna Ah, there we go. This belt has been conformed to this position for quite some time. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. You fellas, to rest your eyes on that. Especially that right there. Yeah, it, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I'll give him credit for trying. And I guess credit for winning because it was bolted on it and did work. Oh, that does not sound pretty. Whew. Does not sound good. First off, we'll pull, peel the old carby off of it, starting with this linkage here. Let's see. Okay. This inlet for the fuel uh, line is just completely pugged, plugged. Plugged, plugged. You know what I mean. You can't see into it. There's dirt in it. What I'm hoping is that the uh, carburetor was drained, ran out of gas before they parked it. I'd really love to know that fuel pet cock wasn't uh, left open and that this thing's not full of debris. Debris. Oh, on this one, the stud is turning. So... It's not supposed to do that. But. This is a uh, Marvel Schiebler, Schiebler, Scoobler carburetor. Cast iron bodies, I think is what the metal is, which means they rust really bad. Ah, that thing is tight. Oh, there she comes. Mm, still tight. Okay, that little bolt doesn't want to come out. We'll have to uh, do an extraction on it. It's got reasonably new gaskets on it. These little guys are pretty heavy. And a little bit of rust. You ain't gonna be able to see it till later, but that's the U. So I'm gonna throw a little extra horsepower into this in the interest of uh, speeding the video up. Still trying to find the perfect uh, match of good, interesting, mechanically inclined content and uh, 
keeping it exciting enough that you don't fast forward through the whole clip. Haven't found it yet. But I'm working on it. Sure, just grab on there, be fine. Okay. I get the nut out. Okay. socket or uh, nut out of there before I get it off. Okay. Oh, come on. I know you want to come out of there. Got a bunch of grease on it. Oil. It is. think it'll come off these things are so tiny like 12 or 14 inches long not the most efficient way to get fuel and air and exhaust in and out of your engine because uh, they're one piece so you got hot and cold trying to mix together let's go ahead and peel off what's left of this manifold gasket And we'll get out the uh, new manifold and show you what that looks like. I had stuffed towels in here to keep bugs and whatnot from getting into it. We're going to scrape that off. This here is a Tesco 9N9425WG. It's for the 9N, 2N, and 8N comes with gaskets and this fantastic looking piece of machinery. I wish uh, it was this easy on everything I worked on. Just looking it up online and buying it. We're gonna go ahead and uh, clean all the oil, oil off of it and uh, put some kind of a metal treatment on it. Try to keep it from rusting. But that's what we got. Part number's right there. Well, the fellow's already scraped this off pretty good all around everything. Um, I highly recommend if you're doing something like this, um, take a little wire brush and uh, scrape all the mating surfaces around your ports. Clean all your bolt threads out. Get everything nice and clean all the way around. Do this until you get uh, shiny metal. You don't want any remaining flaky exhaust, gasket residue, or crud, or junk. Now this here engine has been sitting um, in a barn, but the back of the manifold was broke off, so you could get debris and stuff in it. Now let me show you what happens here in Oklahoma anytime you leave something setting. See this port, everything looks good, right? Check this out. That hole is completely blocked with a mud dauber nest, completely blocking off the flow of uh, air, or well, in this case, exhaust. You can see the valves right there, same thing. That one's got a mud dauber behind it. All right, uh, trying to get a good shot here. See, that's the valve in there. Small screwdriver and a vacuum. You want to put a vacuum on it, and uh, with negative uh, pressure on there, it'll suck all the dirt out instead of letting it fall into the engine.
Well, we're ready to do some reassembly. Got me a new set of uh, nuts. Now these are snug going on there. They're designed to not loosen off. Um, I have my two gaskets, which any of you who've watched this show for a while, I always spray my exhaust and uh, head gaskets with this stuff. It's a nice, even, thin coat. Kind of helps seal. High temp coating. I've already done both of those, so we'll pop them in place. I also put my uh, throttle rod back on. As you'll recall from the earlier episode, it snakes underneath the manifold. I didn't want to forget that little fella. Because you do need a throttle. Okay, those are in place. Now the exhaust manifold, I coated with this stuff here called Rust Prevention, Rust Prevention Magic. Can't even talk. You're supposed to apply it to bare, clean metal. Exhaust manifolds, bolts, whatever. I'm giving this a test run. It's got good reviews, but uh, I don't know whether it's a, a good product or not, so I uh, can't tell you there. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set this little lady on there. Now these nuts and bolts can be fun to get in there, especially these two here in the middle. Because these nuts are pretty tight and you can't hardly get the uh, thing started here. So I like to put the outside ones on first, the easier ones to get to. Run them in where they're just barely holding the manifold in place and then uh, attempt to uh, get the in inside ones on. Okay, where did that long extension go? Oh, it's on my gun. Well, it looks better. Don't know if it'll work better. We will find out. barely grabbing the way this rpm stuff is applied you're supposed to heat the part up a little bit with a hair dryer or a heat gun this is going to be fun and then start brushing the uh, rpm substance onto it on a bigger part it's a little more difficult to keep even heat on it you, the bad thing is you can't really tell when it's applied so the good thing is I'm always looking for new products to try on old vehicles and when I'm working on my own stuff, I don't mind uh, experimenting a little. They shrink. Like uh, like on the LS motors and like the uh, Cummins diesels, they will actually shrink and shear off the end bolts, studs. So they will move, especially if you got a heavy load on them all the time. Well, that looks much better. We'll move on to the carb. Hmm, just give you a little once over that installation. Looks much better. There are new bolts. That annoys me that that part number is upside down. Why does that got to be upside down? It's my OCD kicking in, but that ought to work a lot better. This whole entire port was busted off the old one. Now the throttle rod, I'm not crazy about it touching that oil line there. I bent it a little bit, so it kind of contacts the bottom of the manifold under there, goes over there. So we'll cycle through it and there's no resistance whatsoever. So put a little grease maybe on this or can't really bend that line easily. It's going right straight into a fitting, but there's no stress on it. Well, here we got the old carby. It looks from all appearances to have a reasonably fresh carburetor kit in it. See, this looks brand new, or at least pretty clean. It looks to have a newer, as in softer, carby gasket there. Um, that's what I was trying to tell you, the fuel inlet totally plugged up. So uh, we're gonna pop it off. I'm really hoping that this thing is uh, not just completely full of debris and rust. What happens lots of times, especially with ethanol fuel, um, people leave these parked, you know, with the pet cocks on, and it just absolutely fills these uh, carburetors with junk. 
what you should do is uh, shut your fuel petcock off and let the thing run until it runs out of gas or runs mostly out of gas. Because if you don't, your carburetor is your low point in your fuel system. So if your fuel petcock leaks, it'll fill the carburetor up in your entire lower tract of your uh, air intake tube. Just cause a mess. So make sure you got a good functioning petcock on it. You can pick them up, like I said, anywhere that sells uh, tractor supply stuff and food and whatnot for animals. They're super easy to get a hold of. So just keep a good petcock on it and uh, save your fuel system some trouble. Don't really need to pull that off, I reckon. Okay, we need to pop this off. Um, a quick way, quick tip to get your uh, gasket busted loose is just run one of your bolts in where it's just got a little bit of a gap under it and just tap the top of the bolt. It's better than trying to drive something into the gasket surface. There, see? Some penetrating oil in there. Just gonna cycle it a little bit. This needs to be free because that's how you adjust a carburetor when the thing's running. It's got a uh, main jet full throttle kind of adjustment and then it's got a smaller like idle type real low rpm operation okay. this kind of thing you want to probably just let set for a while you do not want to break these off so we're going to let her sit for a minute well time has passed i can turn it by hand now it was completely seized Give her a little, little bit of this action, and then a quarter turn, a little bit more of the lefty right, another quarter turn, a bit more lefty right. Throw a hammer in the floor. Y'all saw that coming, why don't you tell me? See. All right, now it's easy. Please don't be covered in corrosion and rust. Ooh, yeah. yeah, that's kind of what I feared. That's probably a pretty good indication of what the uh, bowl is gonna look like. All right, well, the only way to find out is to find out. That little cup thing, that little funnel looking job that uh, it goes in between your gaskets. And yeah, look at that needle and seat. That's pretty rusty. Looks like we got some clean out, clean up ahead of us. Let me get my flashlight. Hmm. It's not horrific. You can definitely tell there's a fuel line in there like where the fuel level was. So this poor machine was clearly parked full of fuel. But honestly, it's not bad. I've seen much worse. That little rusty tube right there, that's where that needle come out of. So maybe giving her a ride in the sandblasting machine. Now it's a pretty regular occurrence for a small town mechanic shop like mine to have people bring you machines, you know, that aren't running anymore and they were when they were parked. I gotta tell you, Especially since the advent of uh, high doses of ethanol and fuel, nine times out of ten, it's fuel system. So I'm just going to let that penetrate in oil. This stuff works pretty good, especially if you can let it set for a while. But usually it's fuel system. I mean, exact, perfect example is what's going on here. I mean, that thing is hopelessly stuck. No way that dude would have worked. You can see the right there. Did you hear that? I'm starving to death. See right where the fuel's been setting for years. So we're gonna try to uh, pull that deal out of there. Hmm. Yeah, this is looking more like it's gonna need a comprehensive rebuild before we can do anything with it. I was hoping to start it today. But ain't no point in even putting this thing on the engine. What I don't want to do is bust off the tabs that mount this uh, pin. Trying to 
jar it loose. It's moving. Sometimes only go one way or the other. But right now I'm just trying to get it loose. So we'll go any direction, which it is. I'll let that set for a minute. Pretty much from the inside. So it's not all over the carburetor body. Let's see if it's not all over the carburetor body. Go ahead and give that a little bit. And I'm going to shoot some down the uh, rusted holes. Just to let it start working. Okay. I'll start loosening stuff up, hopefully. Give this one a little drink, too. Okay, this came loose. Fortunately, that one's pretty clean. Good sign. Need to fire up the old ultrasonic cleaner. That's already turning a lot better. Just from that very short amount of time I had that penetrating oil in it. It's good stuff. Throttle spins freely, as it should. It's at the top of the carburetor. We're just gonna knock some of this. Oh look, the needle's spinning, or the float's moving already. Penetrating oil works pretty fast. Okay. Do a little tappy tap on her again. It can stick in uh, the tabs that the thing swings on and on the float itself. Now she's moving freely both directions. I'm just barely wrapping it. Let's see if we can get a hold of it. You don't want to grab it way up high there, just right on the end. Huh. Extracted. Mmm, yummy. All right, you think we can get the float out? For the uh, needle. Oh, she stuck pretty good. It's fortunate, unfortunately, wedged in there way up high. So uh, might end up just having to let this guy sit for a second. Can't really grab a hold of it. While the old carby is soaking, we're gonna move on to the star tar. Um, when I got it, it was already uh, apart, and this piece was missing off the drive gear. Um, so I ordered a new one. This one's brand new. Don't twist it. Resist the urge to see how it works. Leave it together. Um, what we gotta do is insert this dude on here, like so, on the inside, and drive a pin through here. Kind of goes like this. Problem is, see how it goes that far and stops? The shaft here has some gnarly grooves on it from channel locks. I mean, really bad, deep, right there. So I'm gonna have to get my uh, 90 degree sander and uh, shave that down real gently. Now I am taking a gamble with the starter because I do not know if it works. I want to show you the severity of what we're going to try to fix here. I mean, that is a, that's a vice grip mark there. I wonder if Derek from Vice Grip Garage did that. That's clearly a vice grip mark. We just basically got to smooth it so it'll slide. Anyways, it's a roll of the dice trying to work with this existing starter. Don't know if she works. I did wire it up to 12 volts and it does spin, so I know it will do that. Let's roll of the dice. It's been 80 but 90 bucks or whatever on a Bendix or 200 on a whole starter. See, I'm just barely gonna touch it. I'm just taking down the highest spots right now with this. Then I'll hit it with like some uh, 300 or 400, something like that, grit paper. It is 
never gonna work with those marks. Untouched, no possibility. I shut the compressor off. So it wouldn't interrupt our conversation. Whew, that's a big guy right there. If they got it was a little farther in here, it would clear the area that the shaft uh, needs to be smooth. Already hit it with the uh, 80, just cleaned it up some more. This is some uh, 320. I'm gonna try to feather anything out that's kind of a problem. I'll probably hit it with uh, 400 or 600 after that. This little move freely. Give her a test with the uh, Bendix. It just needs to be able to go boop, boop. That'll qualify. Excellent. I'm gonna spray her off with brake cleaner and uh, I'll shove this dude on there, drive the pin. Well, it's part of my uh, truth in advertising scheme. Not ever trying to hide you f anything from you fellas. Pin does not want to go in. It's just got a little too much pressure. So this is my setup with my cheap Harbor Freight or Northern Tool deal. Set the starter in there, two equal size bolts. Final configuration. I took two sockets, equal size, equal height and just uh, taped them together and uh, just wedged them underneath of the Bendix assembly in the top of uh, that dilly whopper right there, the housing. Just put just a tiny bit of pressure on it, just enough to drive the pin in and the pry bar or the uh, punch out. So she's in, she's square, didn't lose no fingers. She's good to go. Well, after some soaking, about 35 minutes worth, needle came out, no problem. It's a rubber tip needle, so it's definitely had a carb kit put in it. You fellas remember that uh, Johnny Cash song? It says something along the lines of uh, kicks like a mule and bit like a crocodile. Well, uh, this one was bad. I have never in my life, in all my years of mechanic, and ran across a carburetor that was more thoroughly gummed up just from what I would call asphalt deposits, especially in the needle and seat area, the inlet passageway, also had been damaged by a uh, hammer wax and stuff like that. So I had to plane it, you know, get it flush. I run it through the blaster, both pieces. See, it's nice and silvery on the inside. Get all the garbage off of it. Blew out passageways, run wire through them. Just very lightly blasted the outside of it. Didn't want to get too far into the pores or anything, but not trying to go for a show tractor, but it was terrible. We got us a new needle and seat. I was able to get this thing out. Tech tip, uh, this is perfect dime size. Just wedge you a dime in there, boop, boop. So, this was not a fun carburetor rebuild. It took way longer than anticipated. I had these uh, hopes and dreams and visions in my mind of just, you know, spraying some carburetor, cleaning through it, and uh, bolting it on the engine and be running already. But, uh, nope. Not today. Okay. When you put just enough torque on it to bend the dime a little, that's when it's about where it needs to be. Yeah, that was not fun. Alrighty then. I'll try to remember how all this went back together since it's been a minute. Let's see, it was this guy. Sorry, this little cat rolled away. I made sure that I blew everything out. There's no uh, moisture. Made sure I was getting the air flow through everything. Okay, let me get my ratchet or my socket. If 
about going to have to quit for today. Hot wife wants to go get uh, ice cream. I'm usually pretty easy to talk into that, if you know what I mean. Okay, give that a little snuggie. All right, now am I forgetting anything? And put this fella, let's see, this way. Okay, float back on. Okay, float's doing the floating thing. Now we're gonna try to line the holes up good as possible. Hmm. Don't know if that guy is gonna go through there or not. Might have to trim that out some. I'm gonna have to get my uh, box knife and trim that hole just a little bigger. I'll do that off camera. Then I'm gonna go and tighten it back up. Put the screws in. Now we're going to take this gem, place her on top of that. Okay. Now we're going to capsize her. Okay, put some uh, carburetor screws in. This was a fun one. I say that in jest, obviously. This thing had a uh, about a 0% chance of working in the condition that it was in. This is an original carburetor too. It's not a knockoff. And if you can save your originals, that's the way to go. Okay. You can hear the float doing the float thing. Doing the old float dance. Okay, we need to put this fella back in the bottom. It's just a plug, drain plug. Now we need to put, I believe they call this the main jet needle in clean that up it was it's got some pitting on it still but and i didn't see a gasket on this thing so i'm not sure if it's got one or not i don't think it does same deal just gonna run this all the way in all right there we have it one uh restored carburetor Ready to go on the engine. Then we can adjust our adjustments and we'll be off motoring, hopefully. All right, fellas. What do y'all say we uh, go ahead and slap this carburetor on this machine? Let's see the choke. Let's see, that one's the choke. So that one is over there. So this little fella needs to pop on here. I think that's the right way. Either this end or this end goes on there. Only one or the other. This new gasket on there. I didn't pull that stud out of that other manifold. I'm going to have to break the manifold to get it out. So for the momentary, we're going to use a 5 16 bolt. Work just fine. Okay, and use the factory nut on this one. Oh, I got that lock nut, it don't come on it. Restored. All right, make sure everything cycles. Here's two. Go ahead and hook us up to the uh, the governor throttle assembly okay get 
the whole tub it. All right. See if we've got a cyclage. We do. Excellent. Fellas, want to bring your eyes in here a little closer? Got our new manifold with the uh, upside down writing and our uh, freshly overhauled carburetor. If you want to see how that linkage moves, try to reach up there to the throttle. This guy goes to the throttle on the carburetor. That's full throttle. That's idle, full throttle. Or backwards, that's full throttle. That's idle. Much improved. Now, we're gonna adventure our way over to this side of the engine and uh, put the starter back in it. I think at this point in time, we're gonna go ahead and put the starter back in it. Time has gone by since we last uh, convened. Seconds for you, uh, a couple of days for me. It's, uh, what day is it? It's Wednesday. It's 8.30 at night, it's raining outside, which is why uh, some of my outside projects have been uh, delayed. And I'm gassed, but the show must go on. When you take these starters apart, I put a nut on the end of these bolts, just a 5 16th, keep everything together. Uh, not sure why, but the same bolts that hold the starter together uh, also are the ones that mount it to the engine, so you want to try to keep everything squished together. So, we're going to spin it around. See about snaking it up in here. Uh, get a couple of bolts started. Now, as far as the electrical system goes, I don't know if this was a running a 12 volt system or a six volt. So we'll have to figure that out. It didn't have a battery in it. It does have an alternator, which more than likely means it's running a, a 12 volt system. So we'll have to figure that out. Don't know. I want to overdo these bolts. They do have lock washers. Alright, so I got my screw. And let's see, the solenoid is laying over here. I definitely want to put a new wiring harness on this thing. But uh, again, that'll be one of those. I'll do it after uh, I make sure the thing runs. This is just lovely wiring. Uh oh. Oh, that was just a net. Alright, so. This guy is loose, so. Yeah, that's. Let's go ahead and loosen her a little more. Okay. I'm gonna make sure these aren't rusty. Yeah, you can tell it's 8.30. Or 9 or whatever it is. I'm pooped. It's been a long day. Okay, oh, sorry. That nut. My screw here. Okay. Put the sole solenoid back on there. Barley. Okay. Another hint that this could be running a, uh, oh, ouch. A, uh, six volt system is the, uh, there's a big aftermarket automotive style resistor mounted, uh, 
up there where you can't see it. Definitely not factory. Well, I really messed up with that bucket of hardware. When I got the tractor, I threw that random uh, bucket of hardware on a table down there in my satellite shop with a bunch of other random hardware and then totally forgot that I put it there. And then about a month later, I was down there cleaning out and I took all the bolts and everything on that table and just threw some away that were rusty and yeah, somehow I got lucky and didn't throw away the right ones. The only way that I knew that this was the right bucket, because I totally forgot, is one or two bolts in there had a tiny bit of red paint on them. So there's a bunch of other junk mixed in there too that didn't originally come with this tractor. So let's look at our spaghetti wiring real quick. Um, where'd that tube go? Oh, here it is, in front of my face. Starting at the battery, we have a positive battery cable, which goes to right here. Um, let's see, we got a heavy gauge red wire, it comes back, snakes around, goes up here to this common post. Okay, so that's a, that's supplying voltage to most of the stuff. So we've got this wire here loops around and goes up to the amp meter. And this wire comes back out of the amp meter. That should be your main charge wire. Yeah, it's one of two wires. So these are, that one's a charge wire. This one should be to the coil. Just dead reckoning. So let's check. This wire should go to the starter switch. So there's only one little one. It does go to the starter switch. One thing I do notice on this particular machine, it has no ignition switch. Um, something's gotta turn it on or off. This I think is a headlight switch, but I think based on the wiring going to it, I think they're using the headlight switch as an ignition switch. The machine has no headlights. They probably, when they changed it to a 12 volt system, did a delete on the uh, six volt lights and ran no lights at all. Okay, so where's this wire go? The black wire goes to the resistor. This is a resistor right here. That wire goes to another resistor, which I think, uh, is stepping down the voltage to go to a six volt coil, I think is what the deal is. Okay, so I'm gonna isolate this guy, make sure it's not touching anything. Uh, cut this guy off, it just, that'd be 12 volts constant. And I guess try to uh, set a battery in there and see if we can figure out what happens when we, uh, I guess, hit the ignition key, which is push button, Ugh, which is totally rusted up. Yeah, and it won't move. I had to go find my negative battery cable. I don't know what they had it hooked to. I think probably the battery tray, which I have not put in yet because I haven't tightened all the bell housing bolts. I'm not gonna permanently put anything on this tractor uh, until I make sure that the thing will operate. I don't wanna put all everything back together and find out that the clutch doesn't work or the transmission's broke or who knows what. So we'll just uh, stuff this little guy right here. New bolt, new washer. Hopefully make a good ground. And that is not a 9 16 Where'd that go? Harden my reach. I have no gasoline at all. So, let me get this thing where uh, it's almost ready to start. And then tomorrow I have to go eat some gas and that means I gotta sleep on, wait and see if this thing will crank or not. We're gonna set this battery in here, just flop it up on here. Don't let me forget to put that oil pressure line on. I'm gonna make a, quite the mess. Let's see, get my negative. Get out of there. Positive. I disconnected the, these two wires. One goes to the main positive distribution here and the other one goes to this resistor which goes straight to the coil. So 
So these two should be my ignition switch. They were routed to the headlight switch. So, okay. See if anything pops or smokes. Shouldn't. This electrical system so uncomplicated. Okay. So, uh, what I need to do is check our voltage here. Let's see. Our battery is making 12.1 volts. So, I'm going to go down here to the engine block, see if we have 12.1 volts here. We do which means we should have 12 volts here. We do. Okay, I need to check continuity between this wire through that resistor, through this resistor to here. Make sure they're getting continuity. This is a little suspect, a little floppy. Okay. My main objective is to see if my voltage is getting stepped down between here and here, it should go in through those resistors. See what she uh, steps her down to. Okay. Battery 12.1. This guy should be 12.1. Okay. Here we should have 12.1. Here we should have something different. Nope, we've got 12 one still there. Okay, what do we got here, 12 one? Okay, what do we get here? Uh, we're bouncing all over the place. And here as well, we have 12.1. My brain's too tired to think right now. So we'll have 12 volts going to that coil. I need to see if that's a 12 volt coil. I've taken liberty of getting down there and popping the uh, coil off. It is a Taiwan unit, and this gasket is completely shot. I mean, I don't know why they even bothered putting it on there, other than maybe using it for a spacer. It's a little crusty, but I don't know. Down here, Try to get you down in here. This is the distributor body. It's a condenser. It's got a reasonably new cap on it. Um, kind of wanting to see if the points would work. They spin. Can't hardly see nothing down here. I can see in there the. Uh, uh, okay. That's the uh, rotor bug, Look at that right there. Well, I've about had all the fun I can handle for one night. I got my uh, meter set on the ohm scale. I've been trying to get in here to the points, which are right there above my fingernail. Uh, I can't really see them. Let's see. All right. Well, I can get to it better over here. You can't see it, but trust me, they're there. They were super crusty. I sanded and filed and sanded and filed. Finally, I got it where, uh, let's see, I'll show you. I can ground the case here. I do this with one hand and it's my left hand. Okay. Case grounded here, and I can go to the, uh, there's a screw right there that the coil contacts. So we're getting a good strong signal through the uh, points. So if I was to open those points, the signal would break. Um, this machine is suffering from a bad case of been sitting too long-itis, like this relatively new Rotor bug, look at all the corrosion on it. Uh, one last thing I wanna do, 
before we uh, shut this show down for the night is uh, we're gonna ohm this coil out, see if it's a six volt coil or if it is a 12. I suspect a six. So what we gotta do using the same resistance scale on that meter, we're gonna check from this guy to this guy and see what we get. I'll set you up and you can look. If it says 1.5 or 1.6, then that means this is a six volt coil. If it reads 3.0, which is double that the 1.5 resistance, then that means that is a 12 volt coil. Not making good contact here. All right, she's locked down at uh, 1.7. Try to find the cleanest point on here. And 1.4, that means that this is a, yeah. Yep, this is a 12 or a six volt coil. So I'm gonna have to do some digital work here because uh, you cannot shoot 12 volts to a six volt coil unless you want this thing to explode in a pretty short amount of time. I wanna see if the engine will spin with the starter. So, all right, I'm gonna hit the, uh, the switch here and you're gonna watch that there crank pulley. Nothing's gonna happen distributors off don't have no power to anything but watch that pulley there see if she spins that's a good sign all right on to ignition problems since we last talked i bought a couple things bought us a stock style ignition switch Go in the little hole there where there's nothing to replace uh, my Clico clamp as an emission source. We bought a tune-up kit. is a points condenser and rotor bug. I'm probably not going to install the points right at this moment uh, because a lot of the aftermarket points are terrible. So we're going to see if we can get a spark with those. My main concern was this guy. The rotor bug has pretty heavy corrosion on the bottom, on the top, and I suspect in between the two of them, which would cause a inconsistent spark. Lastly, I bought uh, a 12 volt square coil, which apparently none of them come with the little gasket that goes underneath them. Although you would think that the gasket should come with it. And that's clearly marked 12 volts, the two and a half ohm resistance. So, we're gonna run a 12 volt system. We're gonna run a 12 volt coil and do away with that six volt coil. Don't need problems that don't need to be there. You know what I mean? Let's knock out a few parts of the uh, digitals real quick. I noticed that our main uh, wire that comes from, uh, well, this guy comes down there from the battery solenoid. Our main power comes in. This one goes up through the amp meter and then out, well, back from the alternator. It's uh, got a bad crimp on it, so we're gonna Cut that crimp off. Okay, yeah, this is all loose. So we're gonna do a delete on that. Like so. Okay. And then I'm gonna throw my uh, terminal on the floor. Wow, that one got about 10 foot of Air going down it. Let's see. Yep, that's the right size. Do a little crimper. Make sure that our electricals are doing pretty good on this tractor. 
Don't need her to burn down out in the middle of the woods or die and have to walk back. This fella here, which I had to put the correct size terminals on the end of. Get that in the hole here. Let's see. Okay. Put on our ring and our nut. some point in time when I buy some lights and uh, headlight switch, we can uh, pull that rusted up guy out and wire in some lights. Although I've never, as many years of, as I've had tractors, I don't ever recall driving a tractor at night, especially not a brush hogging rig. Okay, I'll go get my pliers, tighten that up shortly. All right, got a key. We'll write it in. Doesn't really matter which one of these go where, but we're gonna snake this guy. Let's see, we'll come around this way. All right. And bring our battery power in. Right here. I will be rewiring everything on this tractor once I find out that it's a good running machine. Okay, where did I put the nut? Oh, here it is. All right, that's gonna take care of the ignition, the power feed side of the uh, switch. Get this up off of there. All right, so we need to pop off this leg here, which is our coil feed. that on the battery. He's a charging. That's the best dead battery I've got right now. Okay, this is going to be our other lead. This will give us power when we turn the key. That's going to be handy. Now this key is, this is not a, uh, a starter uh, switch. All it does is power the coil up, essentially. The button down here is what starts the engine. Time to install our new coil, which is clearly marked 12 volts. Um, it really annoys me that this doesn't come with a gasket. It needs one real bad, and the store I got this at don't have the gasket. Um, now, the old one is beyond you know, useful use. So I'm gonna stuff it on there without one and then order one online. It should still work. Okay, it's a little wobbly, but it should still transfer the sparkles. Okay, I need to get coil wire attached, hook up two of the spark plug leads and we should be good, other than pulling the spark plugs out and cleaning them, which I'll do off camera. So a fella went and dug this out of the uh, parts pile. It's a fairly new exhaust system, including the whole downpipe section of the old exhaust manifold. From this part up is part of the broke off manifold, which is why we got a new one. It busted off clean there. See that whole knob on the end of it? Must have sounded good. I'm going to take the end off of that, put the pipe on here, figure out where in the world it was bolted onto back there. Well, fellas, I know you probably would find it hard to believe that a fella like me, with all this junk sitting around, only has this much gasoline. That's it. I think it's enough to fill the carb or get close. Um, it's pretty heavily oiled two-stroke, so. I also can't find my tiny funnel set I've got. I've got four of them, no idea where they went. I think a little goblin came and got them in the middle of the night, so I'm gonna attempt to fill that hose, thereby filling the carb, and I'll bring you back for some excitement, hopefully. Well, fellas, I reckon it's time where uh, we find out if we've got an engine or not. 
I've checked that we do have 12 volts to the coil, hooked the battery up, I've hooked the uh, choke rod assembly up, which whoever designed that was a pretty sick individual. I think I have the carburetor full of gas, as much as I can get. I also have some lapping gas we can just snort up into that thing. Um, these usually start pretty good, so I guess we'll find out together. First and foremost, make sure she's in the neutrals, because this thing will run you over. Okay, that's the neutrals. So we'll turn the key on, uh, give her a little choke, and uh, see if she goes. See if all this was worth it or not. Still in the neutrals. spark plug here laying on the uh, manifold here. I suspect we got no sparkles. No sparkles. Reckon I'm gonna pull that distributor apart and put some points in it. Well with that dismal failure I suppose that uh, we're gonna draw this week's video to a close. I'd hope to get the thing running but clearly we're gonna have to uh, sort some ignition issues. Um, the way it goes sometimes. So, I appreciate you guys watching as usual and uh, stick around for the next one. I bet we get it running next time. I hope so anyways. I need to cut some grass.